just wanted to remind everybody that uh, that this is a uh, all a control method to install artificial technology with partial face facial recognition software. And as they get their way, we can start to condense further down into closer proximity than six feet. We can install a, a digital currency through the Federal Reserve. And uh, this will also find out who is compliant by who will wear their little face mask. And, uh, slave muzzle. Your, your slave muzzle, yes, sir. And this is what I believe to be the implementation of the American social credit score, meaning unless you kiss the ass of government, you're not going to get to eat, feed your family, have a roof over your head, get a car, a loan, a bank account, all these things that we uh, we are going to now, in my opinion, take for granted, uh, even though our dollar's worth nothing. But that's that's what I think this actually all is. So it's not really a producer note, more of a um, uh, motion to suspend the rules to discuss this <laughs> this issue here. It is an interrupting motion. I Dilatory. Understand. It, it, it is dilatory. All right. So that's uh, that's all I got for today, sir. But again, that's, Adam. CJ, that's, that's a great point. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because and that's part of, you know, what what we uh, hope to make of this conversation is, you know, if there's to because to, to, no one mind, you know, as brilliant as I am being able to beat Rush Limbaugh in any debate with half my brain tied behind my back, uh, I, you know, I'm not able to, like, I, you know, I, what, what I'm able to do, putting in, you know, basically a full-time job and, you know, reading the news and keeping up with current events and doing the analysis, there's no way I'm going to be able to put forth all the most important analysis right away. And so to, to what you're saying, it's it, in, in the discussion we've been having so far this morning, yeah. And and the way I sum it up is yeah, it's it's all, all of these Manipulations are set up for the rich to get richer, the poor to get poorer. And even the mechanisms of control that you point out there are a means to that end. And the one thing that I wanted to, I want, and I'm with you on all of that. I mean, it is, you, you do see a lot of these scary things. I think the big check on that, though, CJ, is that when, yeah, I, I'm I'm really I hate to say this because it is it, it uh, like a doctor watching a car accident happen, being excited for it to be over as it's happening, so I can jump in and 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 treat patients. You know that's kind of how I feel about the coming of uh, eviction crisis. Yeah, uh, one thing I wanted to point out, and I know you're going to touch base on it in a little bit about Walmart. Uh, our local Walmart here is going to require masks starting the 20th. And I go, if it's really such a crisis, why are, you waiting till why the are we waiting days? five more days? I'm like, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But they're putting out the yeah, notice yeah. in five days. You all no, 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 CJ, 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 you're really not giving our government scientists and experts enough credit here. They, they sent the virus uh, a legal notice to say that it's not allowed to come to Walmart until July 20th. So oh, I feel so okay. stupid. How could I, I not got, see I that? Got, I got one of my official government name tags coming in the mail that says virus free zone. And so it works like those gun free zone signs, but it's a virus free zone sign that you can wear. And then you don't have to wear a mask because he's like, no, 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 I don't need. I look, I put up a sign virus free zone. So, yeah. yeah, no, that's exactly how that works. The virus just stops and says, oh, my bad. I didn't know. All right. right. So I, I think, we haven't seen shirts made yet. So I, I, I think these, I, I, yeah, I, <laughs> oh, man, I, I think these, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, these, these manipulations, if, if, they, if they get to, like, so the eviction crisis, the reason I mentioned that is that that is going to be the big motivator. Like to, to, to reference Jim's story here, Jim was working a job in Phoenix that he saw was getting shut down and not coming. He was, I guess, Jim was working on, with a business that was, you know, the the day, the, 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 the rental scooters. Yeah. Uh, what do you call them? That you swipe a card or you, it's, you scan a QR yeah, it's code. It's on your app. app. Yeah. It's an app. Yeah. An app minute rental scooter company. And it was like, yeah, this isn't going to come back for a while. And he saw the opportunity. 
that he had here in Gardenia to, to, hey, I can reduce my rent to zero. And then I don't have to worry. You know, I don't have to, like, it's just, all right, you're stress-free. And I don't want to say anything about the, the other family living here uh, who, who are getting an RV and coming back right now uh, because we haven't discussed their, their, you know, what they want to discuss publicly. But uh, for them, it's the same thing where it's like you could be comfortable living off grid and you could buy land still if you, if you can afford it. But if not, there are people who own land who will let you, you know, live in, in, in a way that your rent is essentially zero. And you go, this is going to force, you know, a major realignment, a major shift for, for humanity. And if they push people out right now, you know, if government pushes people out of the system like this, they're not going to be so desperate that they're going to you know, cling to the system. They're going to go, hmm, let's create our own thing. You know, I did a really fun interview with uh, our friend Marcus Pulis yesterday for Aquarian Anarchy. And we talk about the, the, the Gardenia Independence Project and United Nations of Freedom and Homesteading. And one of the things that came up was that we're at this weird intersection of technology and, and government where you want food independence? Okay, you can, you, you can feed a family with, with a quarter acre in your backyard. We, we have the technology, right, the irrigation and understanding of gardening and food production, right? You want to be you want you want to be in off grid for energy? Okay, it's not hard. It doesn't cost that much to switch your home to solar. Radically reduce your energy consumption. You go. You still got your needs met. You're still comfortable, and now you're not dependent on that system. You want to collect rainwater? Well, except in cities where they made that illegal, because they saw what could happen if you could collect your own rainwater. No, the government has to claim ownership of the rain itself too yeah okay but in most places no you don't need that and i think the same thing with jobs as with living situation and sustenance pushing people into the black market working under the table and getting paid in crypto or barter i think i that, that that's my so I, that's my my sort of counterpoint the silver line that I, I think they're, they're either going to have to pull back. I don't think they're going to get away with all of those things that you suggest there, CJ. But I want to ask you also about the facial recognition thing. Because if they really wanted to go to a world of full tracking with facial recognition, why would they give everybody an excuse to wear a mask? All right. So uh, here, there's two thoughts to this. First and foremost, China already does this. China owns the vast majority of our debt, and it's a belief that the Chinese government is the ones that's behind this push for our government to be controlled and manipulated in certain ways. And it's a battle of economic power. And that if we don't comply, we'll default on the debt, plummet the dollar, and then, re and then install the digital currency. For example, you can't buy seeds in certain places, but you can still buy lottery tickets. They shut down small businesses, but don't lay off government employees. The, this isn't, this isn't making any sense to anybody with a rational mind. So the irrational thought of the technocracy, well, I mean, I don't think it's really irrational at this point, but again, they already have a social credit score. They already have the, the uh, you can't get on a plane or a bus or a train if you're one of those lower social credit score people. So somebody like yourself, myself, and Jim, and anybody that is tied to the freedom circle here with Adam versus the man is now immediately on a list where our social credit score is down. We can't get on a bus. We can't buy property. We can't do anything. And it's already happening in China. So the idea and the thought process is that we're in this push already. It's not say government with somebody going, okay, now today is this day. We're going to push this. It's all naturally falling into place. And there's many videos out there of like the council on foreign relations discussing this issue. There's, there's all kinds of uh, footage out there that's buried that, that points to an agenda. There's a reason why people are saying it's a pandemic. There's a reason why people are saying, I'm not going to wear this 
this, you know, nut cup over my face. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not going to comply because they have other systems to identify you with. If you're not going to wear this over your face and they're doing uh, artificial intelligent facial recognition software, then they're going to know how to find you. For example, here in South Dakota, the governor just agreed to give everybody's driver's license information to the federal government. And there's three yeah, other you, states. I saw you shared that story. I didn't have the time to figure out the significance, but it was NPR saying that four states are sharing driver's license data with the feds for what? I, they're they're trying to determine, uh, you know, just citizen who whose citizens are and how many people are actually here, and it's 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 to get demographics. It's and and their their actual push is to get all fifty states into one system, so they can f- suspend they your license that. on a dry. They can suspend your license on a federal level. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's yeah. I I I'm not like a, I'm not trying to dismiss this or say that I'm I'm like for it. Obviously, this is an ex- you know how the criminal operation of government works, but when I hear. Okay, four states are combining their driver's license databases. I'm like, who cares? The NSA already has all of them. The NSA already has it in a way more comprehensive database. This is this is like, you know, uh, your local podunk back county bucktooth sheriff, you know, showing up at the World Trade Center going, I just came here to help with the investigation, get fellows, you know, to the FBI agents. And it's like, really? Yeah, I think the thought in, is, is with it, Adam, is that th- these are the smaller stories that are going to push it to be the acceptance of the bigger things the government's already doing. Right. This is the stuff that we know that the go- I mean, people who are paying attention to the Snowden leaks and, and everything out of WikiLeaks and everything else, we already know. Like, you can see the shape under the blanket, the elephant in the room, right? That is the surveillance state, the intelligence apparatus of the federal government. And you go, yeah, that's, that's some pretty heinous crap. And, uh, well, let me me ask you this though, Adam. But you're saying that a story like this is to sort of introduce that idea to the public. So when things just start disappearing and people start (laughs) disappearing randomly, they can go, Oh, well, the database must have said that was the right thing to do. Correct. And so, for example, like your face right now as the host of this show, they can put into a system, recognize your voice, recognize that face, and they can actually shut you down, which is in a sense shadow banning by nature. But it's just these are all little words that we're pushing into normalcy. And I don't want to use the phrase new normal, but this is becoming a normal practice to the point where it's almost like they know an apathetic nation will look and look at a tra- at a train wreck and pass by, but that's just it. They're they're gonna walk. They're gonna drive past the train wreck. They're not gonna go and pull bodies. They're not gonna do that. They're just gonna apathetically drive by and go have dinner with their family. This is they're training us to be apathetic to how government can kill people in various ways and means. So eventually, speaking out against government will be a crime, just like in China. And you won't be able to access the internet with your face. You won't be able to access the internet with your voice. And to be able to broadcast it anywhere on any platform because they will have a... And when I say they, I mean the government systems in place that are designed to say, Hey, we control you. You Like like Governor Christy Noem, she said, The reason why we have this government is because you, the voters, consented. And she said this in South Dakota on the same day they're tear-gassing Native Americans and shooting off fireworks over the Mount Rushmore. And it got me thinking, this is them saying, you're consenting to what we're doing by voting for us. And this morning I got into a conversation about why I'm not going to fall for the two-party voting system, why I'll vote third party, because it's uh, your way of saying, I don't consent to what you're doing. And, and I believe that third party vote will eventually be aggregated in a way that says, okay, well, you don't consent, and you already see people saying, well, if you don't love it, leave it. Uh, and and you go, well, um, this is where I was born. This is where I want to live. I want to fix the government so that I have more freedom. But then they say, well, we all consented to this. The queen has the right to make the ruling. And if she wants to give your information to the federal government, 
she has all the authority to do so because we consented. Now, again, I would say it's not informed consent. I would say it's it's certainly misinformed consent, and which uh, isn't it's really fraud. consent. It's fraud. So exactly. So I, I at the end of the day, That's when we're, yes, and at the end of the day, when we're discussing the rights of people, the government saying you consented for us to take your right, and if you don't comply, we will have methods for dealing with you, i.e. I, the digital currency, the the social credit score, you won't be able to get a house, an apartment, you will live on, you will wake up homeless on the continent that your forefathers have conquered. That is that is literally the goal of this government and the well-off and the the con, and the people that are, are better off for it have already acquiesced to a certain reign and rule of certain individuals. <clears throat> this is why I find it hard to believe that we're going He's a rapist. He's a pedophile. And we're still pushing these people. You know, I, I this morning I gave I, I gave an opportunity to give away $150 on my live broadcast to the first person that would find Ghislaine Maxwell's uh, mugshot photo and to show me one accusation of George or jo Dr. Joe Jorgensen having a sexual assault allegation against her. Nobody clicked the link. Nobody took my money. And it makes you go. Now, wouldn't it just be nice to have that conversation that we don't need to push pedophiles and rapists, whether they're accused or not, to the top of this mountain where they are easily corrupted into saying, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to install this program, you're going to stay quiet about it, and we won't find out about it until you and I are on our deathbeds, and then our great-grandchildren are saying, well, Grandpa, why didn't you stop the artificial takeover and the digital currency? And at some point, you have to go, well... We spoke about it, but people consented to it. And at some point, like I said, you and I are going to be the enemies of the United <laughs> States just because we talk about what the government's doing. And it's, I, like I said, I mean, it's a conspiracy, sure. But when have you ever seen a conspiracy that's founded in facts not come out to light? I mean, we, you can scrutinize anything we're saying and we can still come back to, well, we can prove it. So, I mean, it's not conspiracy at this point. We have examples of the Chinese government doing this. We have examples of the United States government doing this. At what point are we just going to say they're controlling people through the exploitation of children to control the population and then giving you... Like, I went through the headlines this morning. Nothing is about Trump's sexual allegations or Biden's pedophilia. None of these issues are at the top. It's all about the most boring news cycle ever. Until we switch to coronavirus 2.0 in five days and it hits my news cycle that, oh, you have to wear a mask in every business in Aberdeen, South Dakota. And if you don't, you can't go in. And if you do, we're going to call the police and use force of government against you. So, so at some point, I'm not even going to be able to go get groceries without a mask. You know, I'm not shaken in my longer term faith in humanity. But I don't know how long this is going to last. I think it's time to bring back the flatten the curve of tyranny graphic. Tomorrow, we'll write it up. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it on the whiteboard before the show. We'll open with that and get into that. All right, so before we get to our guest in just six minutes, I got one more thing. What's that? I got one more, two more things. We got a super chat, but I got one more thing. We need herd immunity from government. And that's all yeah. I'm going to say. <laughs> well said.